Hi guys, it's Indra. Welcome to my Dolphin Emulator Setup Guide. This guide will showcase three parts. Part 1 will get Dolphin and any game you want to play up and running. Part 2 and 3 are optional extras to help get full Wii Remote Emulation and multiplayer working for the emu Emulator Dolphin. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright, so first thing is this, we're going to head on to Google and type in Dolphin Emulator. We're going to click on the first result in Google. We're going to head over to the top left section, click download. And these are all the development versions. We're going to require the 64-bit visual. Save that file. And the latest version. So whatever's the latest version for you, save that file. Once you've done that, you're going to minimize out your browser, head over to your downloads folder. We're going to drag what we've just downloaded onto the desktop. Drag those ones down. And we're going to install Microsoft Visual C++. Now, as you can see, I've already got it installed. So I'm going to click repair instead of install for you. If you already have it, you'll have the same as me. If you click repair, just do so and it will start the process. And we'll wait for this process to finish. I'll be right back once it's done downloading. So the setup has been successful. We can now close out of this. We now right click on our Dolphin download here. Click 7-zip, extract here. If you don't have 7-zip, do not worry. You can use WinRAR or the default Windows one as well, whatever device you use. I will leave a download link for 7-zip in the description if you need an extraction device. We then delete our original two files. We don't need them anymore now that it's extracted. And we have Dolphin Time 64. Open that bad boy up, click Dolphin, and here we go, Dolphin is here. So now the next section, I will show you how to set it up. Right, so now we have your Dolphin open. What we're gonna do is go head over to your controller tab on the right side of the screen, right here. We're gonna click controllers. And we're going to have port 1, port 2, port 3, port 4, and Wii remotes. For this part of the guide, I will be ignoring Wii remotes completely because they complete a complete different setup to get up and running. This is to get you up and running as quick as possible. So we're going to go to here, Wii remote 1, it will be selected here. We're going to click it to none for now so it does not interfere with the controller we're about to set up. Once you've done that, we're going to go back to port 1 and click, make sure you have standard controller clicked or whatever controller you're using, keyboard, GameCube adapter for the Wii U. I'm using an Xbox controller, so I'm gonna click standard controller. Once that's done, we're gonna click configure. Now, once you've done this, the pad will open up like this. I recommend you go on the drop down menu here. We have keyboard and mouse here, it's input because I have my Xbox controller on and all devices. For this guide, I'll be selecting input because I'm using the Xbox controller. And that is done. And as you can see, these are the buttons for the GameCube, and you can map the buttons to where you would like for your Xbox. So, for the example, I mean, it's already set up for me here, but I could click here, and I'll click A on my controller, and button A is now mapped to A for the GameCube. Uh, and then you could go through all these options right here, just using your controller. I did have to do this for the first time setup. It didn't automatically configure it for me. So just go through each one of these options with your controller to get it fully up and running. Once you're done, you can create a profile, name it. So Xbox controller, I already have one here, but you would click save. And then whenever you want to use that controller again, you can just load it up, no issues. So I hope that helps. I'm gonna close out of this one now. And I'm gonna head over to options and graphic settings. I'm going to click on graphic settings here. I'm going to go to general. And most of you are going to have to change all these settings here. So we're going to go onto the back end here. We have OpenGL, Direct 3D11, Direct 3D12, and Vulkan. These are only the four I recommend personally. I wouldn't mess around with software renderer or null. Uh, and it will depend on the type of graphics card you are using. So for best performance, I recommend selecting through Whatever works best for you, trying them out. I'm using 3D11, no problem so far, like I do for most emulators. So I'm going to keep it to 3D11. Then we're going to go on your adapter here. 
once again you're gonna have your microsoft basic renderer or whatever your if you have any integrated graphics cards on your cpu and you're gonna have your gpu if you have a graphics card so i have an nvidia g force gtx 970 so i'm going to be using that one for maximum performance then there's your aspect ratio so i have left mine on auto for and by the way that it will be four by three um auto will be so you'll have black bars on the side of your screen when you're playing but it will give you the full native resolution of the gamecube because all of those games were designed around a 4-3 resolution however you can force this widescreen 16 by 9 uh, this will basically mean the game stretches and fills out the whole screen. I do do this for some games. It does upscale fine for some games, but others it does look a bit odd. So, you know, use at your own uh, demise, I guess. Whatever you prefer. If you don't mind having a few less visuals but and avoiding the black bars, then 69 is great. And here are the other options. So, as you can see, you can see your FPS in game if you don't need that. Uh, Netpling Play, I'll be going over that later in the guide. And here's shader compilation. Now, when the game starts, I leave it on synchronous because I don't find I have too many stutters, but there's shaders within a game. And so for some systems, it may actually be better to click here and turn this on, compile shaders before starting. What this will do, it will load all the shaders in from the start of the game. So you'll have to wait 30 seconds to a minute or however long it's to load all the shaders up. And this could uh, ignore stuttering, avoid stuttering within the game once you're up and running if you take that 30 second, two minute process. Um, and this will build as you play more of the game so you get less and less stuttering. Like I said, I leave this off because I personally have no issues with it. But if you run into stuttering issues, then try this out. It could help you. And then we have the enhancements tab right here. We are going to change options here. We're going to go into our internal resolution. I am personally using a 1440p screen, so I've gone to four times native, the 1440p option. Most of you are probably running at 1080p, so I'll select this one, three times native. Uh, if you're having a hard time with performance, you can always go to the original GameCube resolution or 720p to try and boost your performance. But most of you, if you read the recommended specs, should be absolutely fine on that department. But this will help you out if you have a lower end PC. So once you've done that, we're going to head over to anti-aliasing. Once again, another option. This just improves visuals, uh, smooths edges and stuff like that. I've layered mine on four times at MSAA. Once again, obviously the higher you go, uh, the less, you know, the more impact it's going to have performance. So trial and error, you know, what do you want? Visuals or performance? That's how I go with this. So I'm going to click four times MSAA. And then we, once again, add disruptive filtering. I'm going to go eight times like I usually do on uh, my PS2 emulator. I also did the same thing. Once again, you can change the higher you go, the less performance, but more visuals. And I've turned post processing effectors off. Once again, it's all here. I have it off. I don't really need that at all, to be honest. And then you have more widescreen hacks. And oh, by the way, when you hover over them, it tells you in the description exactly what it does. So if you want to go over these in your own time, that's absolutely fine. Then we have the hacks tab. I personally use nothing on this page. Nothing really useful for the general user. And advanced, once again, nothing really useful for the general user. Apart from the borderless full screen, but that can cause instability, but it is nice for some, I understand that. So if you're looking for borderless full screen, it's right here on the advanced tab. Right, so now we've set that up. I'll try to tell you how to get your games and I'll show you that in a minute or so. Right, so to get your games, we're going to head over to your browser and we're going onto this website. I will link it in the description below. I'm going to go on vim.net slash the vault. Uh, they have GameCube and Wii games. This is by far the best, uh, safe, secure um, ROM site within the emulation uh, community. It's a fantastic site. So as you can see, Legend of Zelda, The Wind Maker, Waker, sorry, uh, right here, uh, tells you the download size and everything. So we're going to go into the search bar here. So example, Mario Kart, click go. And you can see it has Mario Kart Double Dash right there. And uh, go back onto Zelda here, has all the Zelda games for the GameCube. Because uh, we have GameCube selected. So I'm going to go back onto the Wind Waker here. Click on that one. 
I'm going to click download 713 megabytes and I'll click download and we'll click OK save file now the download speeds are a bit slower on this ROM site but that's absolutely fine like I said it comes with the added benefit of a lot of security and it's not ad ridden with a load of rubbish so I don't mind having a slightly longer download as you can see it's about 13 minutes looking at that for me on my internet connection all right now it's finished downloading for yourself head over to your downloads folder find the legend of zelda the windmaker the file and drag it onto your desktop go over to your desktop and what we're going to hear is create a new folder right click new folder i'm going to name it gamecube and we roms you can name it wherever you like but for this purpose i'll name it this i've already created the folder as you can see on the left side so don't worry about this part just messing about with it and so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the new folder we just created by double clicking on it we're going to drag the file into it right click 7-zip extract here and i'll be right back once this is finished extraction to finish off the process for you now that your files com extracted completely go into your folder you should now have these two new files Wim's Lair and the legend of zelda wind waker in a GCM file format, open up Dolphin, click on emulation, play, and now we're going to browse for where you've just saved it. So we've saved it on your desktop, we've followed my guide. I've called mine GameCube and Wii ROM, so whatever you called it, click on the folder, and there it is, the GCM file. Click on it, click open, and the Legend of Zelda Windmaker should now launch as we've got the nintendo if i can show you i'll show you a bit of gameplay like all my guides to show you it's up and working there you go perfect now for everyone for general purpose the guide is over uh you should now be able to play all your games single player co-op you should be able to you know where to download them everything's up and working so if you enjoyed the guide if it helped you if everything's up and working please give me a like and give me a subscribe for more emulation content. I'm planning on doing Semu and other Nintendo Switch emulator, the PS3 emulator, all those. So all your support is greatly appreciated. Now for everyone else, if you'd like to carry on the guide, I will be going over the Wii remote and the Dolphin bar, and I'll also be giving a multiplayer networking with your friends and buddies. Cheers guys, everyone else, let's carry it on. Just like that very quickly add this bit in as you can see i have my game here now um basically you want to go on options configuration add and then you're going to find the folder with your roms in it so like i said the gamecube and Wii roms you select said folder you can now close out of this and now your game will always appear in the dolphin library here so you don't have to click on emulation play you can simply just double click once you've added it to the list so that's that part for part two of this guide i'll be going over the wii remote and the dolphin bar to get your wii controller fully up and working and emulated properly using dolphin now for this there are two we two ways there is the bluetooth stick uh, adapter you can buy which i highly do not recommend because it's very inaccurate it tends to lose connection a lot and even though it's cheap two five pounds you'll end up just not using it and become frustrated with it most likely and there's not on top of a lot of latency what i do highly recommend if you really want to have your wii fully emulated on pc is to buy the dolphin emulator i'll leave a link in the description below for the amazon link for us and the uk edition for it um and i highly recommend this one purely because it's the only one out there uh i mean there's third party ones and everything but they really don't have many reviews Pretty much anyone who uses Dolphin uses the Dolphin Bar. That's literally what they were designed for. So if you want to buy this, link in the description below. I will now show you a video from someone I watched as well. And I thought it was a very well done tutorial. So I'll give you a quick snap of that to show you how to set it up and everything. And then I'm going to go over and make some corrections as time has passed on. There are a few things which changed and you will need to do. But here's the video. Enjoy. Here you see the sync button where you sync your Wii remotes and then there's the four different modes and then there's the mode button. 
and that's pretty much it and here's the stand there it is amazing amazing feeling amazing sound and there's three little prongs and you just plug in the stand that way I did forget to mention that there are these three 3m double coated tissue tape paper now the installation process is actually really really simple all you do you just take the USB cable in your hand and you just plug it right into your computer easy as pie there it is mounted I mounted it on top of my webcam so in order to initially sync your remote with the bar you're going to press the sync button and that'll cause the light up here to blink and then you're going to go to your remote open up the back and press the sync button and once these two are synced the light on both should stay on the dolphin bar has four modes which can be toggled with this mode button the first mode is keyboard and mouse mode which is just pretty much you're able to go around use your mouse with the Wiimote and control your computer that way the second mode is keyboard and mouse game mode I will be honest I am not super familiar with this mode but I do believe is that any if you want to play friggin CSGO with your Wiimote it is possible and it does tell you which each key binding goes with what button on the Wiimote right there I believe that this is almost the same as plugging in an Xbox remote. And here are the controls for those. And then there's the last mode, mode 4, which is Wii Emulator Mode. This is pretty much the mode that I use almost all the time because I really only use this with uh, Dolphin. And I don't really use it to play CSGO or anything or to navigate my computer. It'd be kind of cool though, it'd be fun to try out, but you're just going to mainly, if you're into emulating, this is the mode you're going to keep it on, and that is what gives you your access to use your Wii Remote with Dolphin. Once you have your Wiimote all synced up, you're going to go straight into your Dolphin 5.0, click Controllers, and then look at your Wiimotes. Most of you, if not all of you, will have emulated Wiimotes selected for Wiimote 1. You're going to click the drop down and you're going to go to real Wiimote. You're not going to be able to configure any buttons and this is what it should look like. Then you're going to look down a little bit and it will say real Wiimotes. Um, a supported Bluetooth device could not be found. You must manually connect your Wiimotes. That is pretty much what we did. Um, this might say something different for you if you had Bluetooth or something. I don't have Bluetooth. Most desktop computers do not have Bluetooth as far as I'm concerned but you're gonna click continuous scanning and you're gonna click refresh and if you have done it correctly if you click refresh your Wii remote should vibrate hear this guys every time I click it my Wii remote vibrates and if it doesn't I look in down. I look down a little bit and make sure that Wiimote motor is checked. If it's not checked, then you are kind of going into your game blind, and you won't really know if it works. But that is how you set up your Wii remote with Dolphin. Now, this also supports Wii Motion Plus, and if you have a Wii Motion Plus module, all you need to do is just click that in. And if you have a nunchuck, that also works. And now for some test shots. And here is some of the tester shots. I tried multiple different games. First, I tried Super Mario Galaxy, and it worked just fine. All the buttons work, and then it captures your IR data just fine. It does seem like there is like a little, little tiny bit of input lag, but I'm not sure if that's because of your IR sensitivity in Dolphin, or if that's the actual bar itself. And here it is on the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, a notoriously kind of a crap hole to play unless you have the actual Wii Remote. And here it is just working just fine, showing that the sensor bar is perfect and it moves perfectly and it just works really, really well. Thanks to Island Gaming for the tutorial. Please make sure to check out his channel and subscribe for 
all his content because that was a great video. Um, now on the Wii Dolphin bar, I would like to make sure that you update the firmware when prompted to on the device. Uh, it really is recommended, it will improve its performance and also make sure the LED lights on the actual Dolphin bar itself will last longer because they have made adjustments to the firmware since it has released to increase its in uh, how long it lasts. Uh, the product tends to last have a two to four year shelf life if keep used quite a lot. If you don't use it that much, then expect it to last you know five years plus. But I just thought you would you know keep that in mind since you are spending a bit of money. You know it's not too much, but you know I think it's nice to know that information. Um, so without further ado, your Wii controller should now be set up nicely, and I'll move on to the final part which is to get networking with your friends up and working. So we're finally on to the last part, part three, where are we going in multiplayer and networking with your friends or others. Um, this will only be covering GameCube games, as Wii games require multiple third source third party programs and workarounds and other kind of funky stuff to get working. And it kind of deserves its own completely separate video. Um, but this will cover all GameCube games with co-op and online. Uh, so you can get it up and working with your friends. So without further ado, I'll jump right into it. So to get multiplayer up and working on Dolphin, it has an inbuilt system. What we're going to want to do is head over to Options, Configuration. And we're going to go to GameCube here. And when you go online, I really do recommend you actually turn off your um, memory card. All right, so you have nothing on. Just just for the when you go online with your friends, and so no nothing overwrites or it doesn't you know get messed up or anything. It just makes online a lot easier. So close out of that one, and then we're going to go on to go to tools, start netplay, and what we're going to go is switch it from direct direction to uh, traversal server. This makes it a lot easier. Direction engine, basically you're going to have to find your ping. Uh, you send your ping to your friend and then you have to send the port to your friend. And then they can eventually, once you've sent all of that, can then slowly connect to you and get it all up and running. But, you know, it's very convoluted. And most of the time it's just a lot easier to go traversal server. Uh, you can put your nickname here. Change it wherever you want. Uh, there's an inbuilt server browser, so if you want to go into the server browser, you show now. But if you want to just have your friends, then leave. don't tick that one. What you then do is you just click your game. So I've got Mario Kart Double Dash right here. I'm going to click that one. I'm going to click host. And we're now in. What you do to get your friend to join is you see the room ID here. You would uh, copy, oh, what am I trying to do? Yeah, copy that one. And then you would paste it in Discord or Skype or whatever uh, user system you're using to your friend, you copy and paste that to them. They would then input that one when they click join and then they would join your lobby here. Uh, it would tell you your ping, game status. Uh, important notice, make sure you're both on the exact same version of Dolphin or this will not work and both make sure both of you have your memory card turned off to avoid any uh, complicated issues or any, you know, problems uh, it just makes it a lot easier if both parties do that um, once you've done that this is the buffer basically you want to have it on 8 at a minimum and then the higher you go probably up to about 18 maximum otherwise the latency becomes probably a bit too high but basically this makes lag less um, but I'll start off 8 if it's lagging too much try and increase the buffer but try not go past 18 because then it sort of you know it kind of spoils the whole whole point so with that, you should get your game up and running with multiplayer. I hope that helps. Uh, the tutorial and guide is now over. So I have pretty much covered everything on Dolphin. There's a very few extra things. I'll probably do a video when people ask for them. Post out in the comment if you want them. Um, I hope you liked. Please thumbs up the video uh, or subscribe. That would be absolutely fantastic. I once again say I'll be coming with more content. Remember, if you want the... Uh, Dolphin Bar, the Amazon description is in the description below. Cheers guys, peace.